Good morning and happy Easter. Jesus is risen. He is risen indeed. Uh, we're glad that you joined us uh, on this happy day, uh, this day of resurrection of our Lord. After going the, through the season of Lent, a time of preparation and a Holy Week, Palm Sunday, Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, we come now to the finality of the reality of Jesus' resurrection and what that means for us. It's, it means joy and peace and forgiveness and new life. And so we will proclaim and celebrate those things today in our worship. We'll begin our worship today by singing uh, the well-known Easter hymn, Jesus Christ is Risen Today. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. We are the Easter people who have been to the tomb and proclaim that it is empty indeed. He is risen. He is risen indeed. We are the Easter people who have met him by the roadside and recognized him as the Son of God, risen from the dead and living in this world and the next. He is risen. He is risen indeed. We are the Easter people who have placed our hand in his side and felt his wounds. He once was dead, but is now alive. He has been raised by the triumphant power of the Almighty God. He is risen. He is risen indeed. We worship a risen Lord. This is the feast of victory for our God. He is risen. Alleluia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O oh God, you gave your Son, your only Son, to suffer death on the cross for our redemption, and by his glorious resurrection you delivered us from the power of death. Make us die every day to sin, that we may live with him forever in the joy of the resurrection, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from 1 Corinthians. Now I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, 
in which also you stand through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the 15th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, brought spices so that they might go and anoint Jesus' body. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. Lord, because you have brought life out of death, we now live in hope. Lead us to share the hope of the gospel with a world that is awaiting good news. We pray this in your name. Amen. Easter 2021 is very different from Easter of 2020. A year ago, we were just a few weeks into the pandemic, and I, along with lots of help from Heather, was beginning to get the hang of doing worship online, the ins and outs of YouTube, bandwidth, webcams, microphones, getting links sent out to members, and and anyone else who wanted to watch. It was a scary time as frightened citizens rushed to the stores and bought every roll of toilet paper that they could get their hands on. Not only toilet paper, but uh, many more items were impossible to find for for a long time uh, early in the pandemic last year. Things like uh, beans, rice, whole wheat flour, Yeast, we waited and looked for weeks and weeks and weeks for yeast to appear, and cleaning supplies. And eventually we learned to live with this tiny microbe called SARS-CoV-2, the coronavirus that causes a deadly disease, COVID-19. In my online Easter sermon last year, I commented on the virus that had sent us all home with these words. Yesterday it was reported that COVID-19 deaths in the United States have surpassed 20,000. We could say that's good news considering that a best case scenario was going to mean between 100 and 200,000 deaths. Wow, I, I don't need to remind you that we marked 100,000 deaths on May 25th, 200,000 
on September 21st, 300,000 on December 14th. It only took 36 days for deaths to reach 400,000 on January 16th and 35 more days to reach 500,000 on February 22nd. The infections and deaths continued for many reasons. The longer the pandemic lasted, the more eager everyone was for life to return to normal. Pandemic fatigue is very real. But pandemic defeat is also on the horizon. We're gonna, we are beating this thing. There is light at the end of the tunnel. Millions have received one or both vaccinations. I received my second Pfizer on Friday on Good Friday. So yes, it's getting better. And we're back here, we're in the sanctuary for Easter 2021. Feels good, doesn't it? But we're still being careful because we're not out of the woods yet. CDC Director Rochelle Walensky issued a stark and emotional warning on Monday of impending doom as infections, hospitalizations, and deaths rise, fueling fears of yet another deadly surge. What's causing this surge? Two things. One is the variants, especially the one originally uh, spotted in the, in, the, in the UK. It's called B117. It's a lot more contagious. It looks like it tends to make people sicker and it's spreading fast all over the country right now. And the second one is that people are just letting down their guard a little too fast. And that's why we're still doing masks. I know that many of you are watching this video because uh, you're, perhaps you're not comfortable coming back to worship uh, yet. Um, but we are continuing with our precautions, um, at least for some more weeks and perhaps maybe some more months yet. We don't quite know exactly how long, but we are continuing to take precautions as we come back to in-person worship. Now, warnings of doom delivered by people such as Dr. Walensky can be a positive thing if they challenge us, us to look at the reality of the situation we are facing and modify our behavior to limit the damage that could be done. It could be uh, the, the warning of a coming tsunami. That's impending doom. It is coming. It is coming, and if you don't get out of the way, if you don't get to higher ground, you will die, you will drown. And so that's one kind of, of, of impending doom message that we need to listen to. On the other hand, if we talk too much about gloom and doom, that can be a negative thing. Jessica, not a real name, is a 26-year-old speech therapist who confesses that she has a problem. She checks her social media about 10 times a day. Twitter and Facebook are her main sites, but she also looks at Google for news. And since the start of the pandemic, her habit has increased significantly. The problem with this habit is that it can lead to higher stress. We think that keeping up with the latest news will lessen our anxiety, but in all actuality, it does the opposite. It increases it. It's called doom scrolling, doom scrolling. It's an unsatisfying addiction, says one clinical psychologist. Instead of making us feel safer, it raises our level of fear, of anxiety and stress. So does any of this sound familiar? Do you get into bed, turn off the lights, glance at your phone just one more time? 
Wanting to stay informed, you end up being sucked into doom and gloom, maybe even spiraling into despair. Like I said, it's called doom scrolling. According to some experts, this binging on bad news is not good for our mental health. But we are not the first to experience this. Journalists admit that they have been doing it for years, and the three women who visited the tomb on Easter morning were some of the very first doom scrollers. Mark tells us that when the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, bought spices so that they might go and anoint Jesus. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. That's from our gospel reading for today from Mark 16. What were they feeling? Doom and gloom. Why? Because their Messiah had been killed in a humiliating death on a cross. His body had been laid in a tomb. Large stone had been rolled up covering the door. They were feeling grief over the death of Jesus, stress about the future and anxiety about how they would remove the stone. And they talked about that as they were walking along saying to each other, um, who will roll the stone away for us from the entrance to the tomb? Anxiety is a feeling of fear or apprehension about what is to come, and that's exactly what the women were experiencing. But when they arrived, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. Again, words from our gospel text from Mark 16. Their doom scrolling was met by an act of stone rolling. (laughs) Finally, some good news. But as they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. Verse 5 of our text. They didn't expect to see anyone, so they were startled. Man said to them, don't be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified. He has been raised. Their doom scrolling had been focusing them on bad news, but the words of the young man gave them reason to hope. Then the man ordered them to go tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. Verse 7 of our text. The young man changed their focus from doom and gloom to a new possibility for the future. He promised them that Jesus was going ahead of them and that they would see him in Galilee. So the women fled the tomb, both terrorized and amazed. Since negative emotions can be hard to overcome, Mark admits that they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Yes, the fear that had gotten a hold of them was not easy to get rid of. It took time. And that and what was true for them is also true for us. You can turn off Twitter with a flip of a switch. Some of my Facebook friends voluntarily give up Facebook for Lent or for other reasons. But escaping doom and gloom is really not that simple. Experts say that the solution to doom scrolling is to break out of the vicious cycle of negativity. That's the message for the women who went to the tomb and for us when we see large stones in our path and feel alarmed. The good news of Easter is that God has acted in our lives to break the cycle of negativity. We're invited today to see that the stone has already been rolled back, to believe that Jesus has been raised and and to focus on the future where our risen Lord is ahead of us and waiting for us. 
For starters, the stone is gone. The barrier has been broken down. Most of us have fears about the future and it's easy for us to focus on all the negative stuff, on the worst case scenarios. This was what the women were doing as they approached the tomb. Fixated on the enormous stone that they feared was going to block them from entering the tomb and anointing the body of Jesus. But guess what? Fear is always worse than reality. Our brains are crazy, writes Tyler Tervoren, a writer who teaches leaders to take what he calls smart risks. Tyler puts it this way, every day our brains lie to us about how terrible things are or how bad they're going to be, but when we finally ignore the fear, we realize everything's pretty much okay, the world will keep turning and we're going to survive. So far, Tyler. Yes, the world will keep turning and God will keep working. The women were so afraid of the stone that they never dreamed that God would take action to roll it away. Their brains were lying to them about how terrible things were and how bad things were going to be. But then God replaced their doom scrolling with stone rolling. And God will do that for you too. So don't let your brain convince you that the stone you fear will always stand in your way. Don't let your brain lie to you. Since God is always at work, fear is worse than reality. Next, open your eyes and see that Jesus is no longer dead. The young man in the tomb sensed that the women were not going to believe what he was saying, so he invited them to go see for themselves. Jesus is not here, said the man. Look, there is the place where they laid him. Jesus is not here, dead in the tomb. See for yourself. Instead, he is alive in people who are showing his grace, his love, his forgiveness, his healing, and his justice. Jesus is alive and well. Whenever a stranger is welcomed, a child is loved, a friend is forgiven, a patient is healed, and an injustice is made right. One of our hymns in our ELW, Evangelical Lutheran Worship, number 389, is Christ is Alive. It was written by a pastor named Brian Wren for Easter Sunday in 1968, just 10 days after the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King was assassinated. Wren wanted to acknowledge this terrible loss while also proclaiming the resurrection of Jesus. Christ is alive, he wrote. Let Christians sing. The cross stands empty to the sky. Let streets and homes with praises ring. Love drowned in death shall never die. Those are the words of one of the verses of this marvelous hymn. Yes, a terrible crime had been committed on the cross. An awful injustice had been done but now the cross was empty and love would never die. That hymn makes clear that the resurrection is not stuck in history, but a reality at every time. The risen Christ, says Brian Wren, is saving, healing, here and now, and touching every place and time. Again, words from that hymn. Jesus comes into contact with human suffering whenever it is experienced. In the face of today's racism and violence, Jesus suffers still, yet loves the more. Again, words from that hymn. Jesus suffers still, yet loves the more. And then the hymn ends with the good news of justice, love, and praise. Truly, Jesus is not dead in the tomb. Instead, he is found in his followers who act with justice, love, and praise. Open your eyes and see that Jesus is alive and well in you and in the people around you. And finally, we are challenged to look to the future, not to the past. 
our risen Lord Jesus, is not simply with us. He is ahead of us, always ahead of us, calling us into the future that he is preparing for us. And our job is to figure out where Jesus is leading us and to follow him there. Doom scrolling traps us in a vicious cycle of negativity that fuels our anxiety. What if we turned away from threats and looked to possibilities? This is what Jesus was doing by moving ahead of his disciples to Galilee and what he is doing by going ahead of us today. Jesus is rolling away stones and calling us forward. Let's move forward toward new possibilities for deeper connections with family members and friends, new possibilities for vital ministry and mission in the church. And there will be a very unique opportunity to do that very soon with your new pastor and new possibilities for justice and righteousness in our community and nation. We don't have to focus on doom and gloom, not with the stone rolled away and our Lord calling us forward, not doom scrolling, but stone rolling. Our worship continues as uh, we sing our next hymn.
Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Glorious Lord, you have created a wonderful world and yet more wonderfully redeemed it. Let your glory shine from the world you have created. Let your glory also shine from us as we have received new life and hope through the resurrection of your son. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, you have appointed preachers who proclaim to us the glory of the empty tomb. You have invited us to your baptismal waters. You have shared your body and blood with us in the bread and wine of Holy Communion. Make us joyful messengers of the resurrection and witnesses to your continuing presence in our world. Lord, in your mercy. Spirit of healing, you were with your son as you went about doing good and healing the sick. Continue to make your presence known to those who are sick, recovering and receiving healing treatments. Lay your healing hand upon them. We pray especially today for those on our prayer lists and those whom we name now in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. We pray, Lord, for all those who have suffered the loss of loved ones, whether through illness, accident, or violence. Bring the hope of the resurrection and new life to all who grieve. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, you have hidden our lives with Christ in God. Renew our hope that proclaiming with Mary Magdalene and believing with all the witnesses of the resurrection, we will someday share the resurrected life with you and all the saints. Lord, in your mercy. Here. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. I invite you to share a greeting of peace with those uh, you may be with. Um, if you're not with someone, you could perhaps send a a text message or an email or give a phone call and uh, offer them the peace of this blessed day, the day on which we celebrate the glorious resurrection of our Lord. This is the time in our worship when we normally receive the offering. And I want to tell you about an offering that we've been receiving uh, during these uh, weeks of Lent. You may remember that uh, we have participated in the 40 Days of Giving program uh, through the ELCA World Hunger program. And uh, we put out a challenge to, uh, which was included in that program to uh, give a dollar a day or two dollars a day or three dollars a day for the 40 days of Lent. Uh, we set a goal of a thousand dollars and uh, we reached that and we set a new goal of $1,500, and we reached that and went past that, and we're now at about $1,700 that uh, members uh, and, uh, and friends of St. John's have contributed to this um, special fund, which will uh, be sent to the ELCA World Hunger Program uh, so that the gifts of this uh, community of faith will help alleviate hunger in many places and in many ways around the world. And so I am inspired and thankful for the generosity of uh, the members of this congregation. Uh, it truly is uh, impressive in that whenever you give, it is to the glory of God and your gifts make a difference. So thank you for offering what God has first given to us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of God's gracious love. So let us pray. God of love, you call us beloved children and welcome us to your table. Receive our lives and the gifts we offer, abide with us and send us in service to a suffering world for the sake of your beloved child, Jesus Christ, amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may our glorious God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Lord Jesus. And may the God of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. And our, we conclude our worship today with our closing hymn, I'm so glad. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. And before, um, before they start playing that, I just want to say a word of thanks to uh, Cindy and Evelyn, who are uh, our musicians uh, for this service. So again, thank you, uh, Cindy and Evelyn, for sharing your gifts with us today. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.